Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's September 15th, and if you haven't noticed, I am under the weather here today, but I think I can make it through the video. So let's dive into things. You can see that we've got quite a dynamic system across the Gulf of Alaska, really amplifying some ridging here across the Pacific Northwest. We're going to kick some strong offshore winds as we go through tonight into tomorrow morning. We're really going to ramp up the temperatures. We get a thermally induced trough coming up the coastline as well. One very warm day here for places like Seattle and Portland, some of the Southwest BC. We'll dive into those details and the extended forecast as we go through the video here this morning. So this is where we are right now. You can see the low pressure system kind of spinning off across western Montana as we speak. Some nice sunny skies out there this morning for Seattle, the Willamette Valley, Washington, Oregon coast doing quite well this morning also. But let's scroll all the way back in time and go through yesterday. You can see all the thunderstorm activity across eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, portions of Idaho. We had some pretty good rain for much of the area. I'll show you who got skunked here in a moment go through the overnight hours and then we come back out towards this morning you can see still clouds hanging across the rockies of idaho and western montana some of eastern washington as well so uh, it's a great time to get this weather station going now before our fall weather really starts to impact the region very fun weather station it's got lightning detection ultrasonic anemometer haptic rain gauge straws of the data for you in the cloud you can see the smartphone app even shows you the doppler radar near your house and whatnot builds its own forecast for you click on the link down below to save 10 percent and again, looking at lightning strikes here over the last 24 hours, eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho, the winners, some of eastern BC got it. Didn't get any lightning strike activity here across western Washington yesterday. And if we look at some of the precipitation amounts, for example, my house, not very far from SeaTac, we didn't get much at all, just enough to maybe wet the ground just for a brief time. Olympia, Tacoma, skunked, Kent skunked, most of Seattle skunked, but you can see some areas in the convergent zone. You can see, look at that, seven tenths of an inch, six tenths of an inch, and you got across some of the foothill areas better amounts. Vancouver Island got a little bit as well, some of the Olympic Peninsula. And uh, if you go out uh, across some of Lake Chelan, you got, you know, what, one, two tenths of an inch or so. And then we go to eastern Washington, kind of hit and miss there, but we did have some thunderstorms moving across the area, three hundredths of an inch from Moses Lake. If I click there, you can see Connell got about half an inch of rain, actually. And look at some of the impressive precipitation amounts across portions of Idaho. Lewiston is right there in some of the, you know, Clearwater Mountains out there, some nice precipitation amounts amounts, no doubt. And eastern Oregon, similar thing here. Some of the east slopes of the Oregon Cascades, there's little meadows, the half an inch of precipitation. Northeast Oregon, some impressive amounts also. And some of the Willamette Valley, look at Portland, up over half an inch. And yeah, Salem, half an inch, not bad. Sharp cut off the further south you move towards Albany and uh, Eugene, but not bad here for a September system. So also looking at this, some, we got some good news as far as the fire smoke is concerned. Looks like these uh, precipitation amounts might have helped yesterday and as we go on into the day tuesday as we turn things offshore as you remember yesterday it had a lot more smoke coming across portions of western washington than what it shows here in this morning's run so that is definitely uh, beneficial here to the area nobody wants to be living in smoke and we have fire weather watches with some of these strong east winds here low relative humidity some of these gusty winds are going to kick off the potential for some fire weather here so anything that does uh, form here across western washington could spread quickly and kick up a bunch of smoke and also kind of a, an interesting look into fall as we start to change the seasons medford oregon is talking about some areas in northern klamath county uh and yeah it's just kind of a, a, a nice little highlight of what's coming as we go on and through the fall season there but yeah some overnight lows are getting a bit chilly for this time of year and day one outlook again thunderstorms kicking off to the east now, looking at last night's European model here. So there's our upper level load. This is the ridge, and we're going to kick things offshore. More on this here in a moment. You're going to want to hear what I have to say here in a moment because we've got some strong winds coming for some isolated locations. And then we're going to cool things down a little bit here as we go through midweek, but we still have some ridging around. We'll see how that goes. Then at the very end of the run, the Gulf of Alaska trough starts to get going, and we start to bring some more zonal flow back towards the region here and hopefully introduce some precipitation amounts with it as we go towards next weekend. Now, what do I mean when I say zonal flow there? So this is 300 millibars, about 30,000 feet up in the atmosphere. There's our ridge right now. That's why we're really going to warm up dramatically on Tuesday. But you see the next system here that's going to start to bring things back on shore. And then we wait for a little bit. I still got some ridging in the general vicinity. But then look at this zonal flow. Look at the jet stream start to point back towards Vancouver Island and Western Washington as we go through next weekend. And hopefully that can bring some precipitation back across the area and help us suppress these fires. 
bears. Now, looking at 925 metal bars onshore flow, but then look at as we go through the day today, we're quickly starting to turn things back offshore. And as we go through Monday night, look at Tuesday morning, look at some of these winds ripping through some of the lower levels here in the Cascade Gaps, the Stevens Pass Gap, the Stampede Gap, and the gap that is a Columbia River Gorge is actually a sea level gap there. So yeah, we're going to get some strong winds out of the east as we go through Tuesday morning. Some of these winds could be gusting up over 50 miles per hour. And at this time of year, when you got a lot a lot of leaves on trees and things have been weakened over the summertime. The first strong winds of the season can create some damage. So I want people to pay attention to this. I don't see the National Weather Service talking about it, but the models are showing some potential for 40, 50 mile per hour gusts, even a little bit higher. And then you'll see that quite rapidly goes away as you go on in through Wednesday morning. And then we're dealing with still with some northerly flow here, a little bit offshore, but no big strong winds during that time period. And then as we go towards the end of the run, when the zonal flow returns, Turns, you can kind of see the onshore flow start to return with it. Now, 10 meter max wind gust in miles per hour, North American model, high resolution. So let's see just how strong some of those winds might be. Well, you see this through the Stampede Gap. You're talking about Black Diamond, you know, out towards North Bend and through the Columbia River Gorge. Stamp, uh, Stampede Gap is right there. Stevens Pass Gap, you're showing some gusts up over 40 miles per hour as well. So again, communities off in the foothills, watch out for the, some of these stronger winds. And even across some of Northwest Oregon, especially across some of the higher terrain where you're typically favored with some of the east, east winds and even Southwest Washington some gusty winds coming across now we check everything else we look at the high resolution rapid refresh and this is the 12z run and you can see some of these stronger winds i mean some of these runs have been having winds up over 50 miles per hour this is i-90 right here so just off to the south or down towards black Dine, diamond maybe edom class some gusty winds and some gusty winds north of that also towards the stevens pass area and uh, communities that are typically favored for those east winds uh, yeah uh, off to the east of everett there now taking a look here at mean sea level pressure i want to show you what's going on here so uh, as we go through uh, tuesday morning you can see the high pressure building inland and the thermal trough coming up the coastline there that's where we're going to get some of these stronger offshore winds as we go on in through tonight and into tomorrow morning. So again, the timing on that is very early tomorrow morning for any communities across some of the foothills of the Cascades of Western Washington, down on in through portions of Western Oregon, especially around the Columbia River Gorge area. And then we'll scroll off into the future and you can kind of see that next system as it swings through Wednesday. It's going to kick the flow back on shore as we get the high pressure off over the open waters there out over the Pacific Ocean. So here we go. Look at today. This is Monday, September 15th. You can see temperature is pretty suppressed here across much of the region. You're warming up for Medford, not that atypical though. And then we go through Tuesday. Look at some of these temperatures just bump up. I mean, Seattle, upper 80s, with just kind of a one day wonder here. Southwest BC dramatically warming up. Portland might be in the upper 80s as well. Willamette Valley ra ramping up these temperatures. Look at Quileu, 80 degrees with these east winds. We're really going to warm things up all the way out towards some of the coastal regions here as well. And yeah, some of the interior valleys in there across western Washington could be pushing 90 degrees. Now, if we look at Wednesday, though, we bring those temperatures back down to earth there as we go through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But we do stay fairly warm here east of the Cascades as we go towards the end of the week and on in towards the week. And then we start to suppress things a little bit more as we bring more of that onshore flow. I talked about that zonal flow returning maybe at the end of the period. Now, look at the European 89 for Seattle on Tuesday. Could we have an outside chance of hitting 90 degrees? It becomes very rare at this time of year to do so. It's not unheard of, but uh, yeah, uh, it kind of an interesting signal there and look at the gfs wants to show 91 i don't know about the 85 for the next day but yeah 91 degrees on the gfs and if we take a look at stampede gap you know it's a shame because if i go to select station and you search around in here you know we really need like an enumclaw or a black diamond reading we don't have one that picks up some of these east wind events that well or maybe a north bend reading somewhere out there that is better for this a stampede gap is kind of you know it's at the it's still in some of the higher terrain. It's not really quite as strong as what you would get across some of the lower elevations out towards Black Diamond or North Bend in some of these events. So you can see it shows it gusting maybe up towards 40 miles per hour, but man, we really need a station out towards Enum car or whatnot to be showing up in some of these ensembles. 
And if we take a look at Seattle Fantasy Windstorm Hunt, you can see maybe we'll get active here at the end of the month. And you can see a couple ensemble members do show some bigger gusts. Look at that one. That ensemble member, what number is 16, shows 58 miles per hour for Seattle. But of course, you have to look at the ensemble mean at that range and it doesn't show anything too incredible. But it's starting to show something. Maybe we'll start to get a little bit stormy here as we go through the end of September, but nothing to get worried about just yet. Now, if we take a look at the ensemble mean on the European last night, there's our upper level low and our ridge giving us a really our big one day wonder of warmth here as we go through the day on Tuesday. Turn the flow, uh, you know, we, we stop the big offshore flow, let's just call it that. And then you can kind of see still some ridging hanging around. And then the zonal flow starts to return as we go through the end of the weekend. And look at this troughing really get established over the Gulf of Alaska right off our coastal waters here as we go towards the end of the month. So that could have some windy period with it, some precipitation, some frontal system systems on going towards the end of the month so we'll be watching that closely here this is kind of off in fantasy land but when the ensembles show it you, you know you start to take notice now seattle tacoma there's our one very warm day there almost considered hot and then you can kind of see the downward trend as we head on in through september and on in through october look at some of these temperatures here at the end of october maybe we'll get a, a nice chilly storm or something at that point who knows and just fantasy land just fun to look at now six to ten day above normal across much of the west coast six to ten day precipitation above normal signal eight to fourteen day more of a near normal signal and also some above normal precipitation again probably catching on to some of that troughing there as we go through the end of september and check out the patreon page if you want to throw some your hard-earned money towards the channel um yeah but otherwise i'll get this video out here here now uh click like and subscribe we'll do this all again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then